Good day, New Hope. This is Pastor Brett coming at you from the Yulestead Chapel with another installment of the great hymns of the church. Today, I want to talk with you just a little bit about the hymn, Come Thou Fount, written by Robert Robinson. Robinson was born of lowly parents in Swaffham, Norfolk, England, on September 27, 1735. His father died when Robert was eight, and at the age of 14, he was sent by his mother to London to learn the barbering trade. Here for the next few years, he was associated with a notorious gang of hoodlums and lived a debauched life. At the age of 17, he attended a meeting where George Whitefield was preaching. Robinson and his friends went for the sole purpose of, quote, scoffing at the poor, deluded Methodists, end quote. However, Whitefield's strong, evangelistic preaching so impressed young Robinson that he was converted to Christ. Several years later, he felt called to preach and entered the ministry of the Methodist Church. Subsequently, he left the Methodist Church when he moved to Cambridge and became a Baptist pastor. Here he became known as an able theologian through his writing of many theological works, as well as several hymns. This hymn text, written when Robinson was only 23 years of age, contains an interesting expression in the second stanza. Quote, Here I raise mine Ebenezer, hither by thy help I'm come. End quote. This language is taken from 1 Samuel 7, 12, where the Ebenezer is a symbol of God's faithfulness. Now I want to dive a little bit deeper into this particular phrase and share with you uh, portions of an article that I found written by David Mathis of DesiringGod.org. The Hebrew word Ebenezer may be the least known lyric among all of our most beloved English hymns. The meaning of Ebenezer originates more than a thousand years before Christ, during the ministry of the prophet Samuel, who played a pivotal role at a key juncture in the history of God's people. Long has he been remembered as one of Israel's greatest figures, alongside names like Moses and David. God raised up Samuel as the first prophet after the period of the judges to serve as God's instrument to establish the kingship in Israel. And yet, apart from the extraordinary stories of Samuel's birth and calling and his extensive involvement with anointing Israel's first king, Saul, and anointing the second king, David, we know fairly little about Samuel. What we do know is this, that during his early days as a prophet, Israel received back the Ark of the Covenant from the Philistines after seven months, having lost it in war. So distressing was it to lose the Ark that when the news of it had come to Israel's judge Eli, he fell backwards from his chair, broke his neck, and died. That's 1 Samuel 4.18. Sadly, even with the loss of the Ark, the nation was not yet ready to come before God in full repentance. It took 20 years for the people to be sufficiently humbled to turn to Samuel to lead them in restoring their relationship with God. So Samuel gathered the people at the town of Mitzpah. There the people would fast and confess their collective infidelity to God. We have sinned against the Lord, 1 Samuel 7, 6 says, and Samuel would pray for them verse 5 of that same chapter. But when the Philistines heard that Israel had gathered at Mitzpah, they took it as an opportunity to march on their enemies. And when Israel heard they were coming, the nation panicked. The people pled to the prophet, quote, do not cease to cry out to the Lord our God for us, that he may save us from the hand of the Philistines. Chapter 7, verse 8. Samuel responded by sacrificing a lamb to God on behalf of the people, and as he did, the Philistines began to attack. But God heard Samuel and answered with a magnificent display of power. Quote, the Lord thundered with a mighty sound that day against the Philistines and threw them into confusion, and they were defeated before Israel. And the men of Israel went out from Mitzvah and pursued the Philistines and struck them. That's verses 10 and 11 of chapter 7. 
God heard the cries of his people through Samuel and came to their rescue. Then to commemorate God's mighty intervention on behalf of his people, Samuel took a stone and set it up between Mitzvah and Shen and called its name Ebenezer. For he said, quote, till now the Lord has helped us. So the Philistines were subdued and did not again enter the territory of Israel. And the hand of the Lord was against the Philistines all the days of Samuel. In Hebrew, Ebenezer means, quote, stone of help. Eben for stone and Ezer for help. Samuel wanted the people to remember not just for a few days, but for years, for decades, for generations, how God had come to the rescue of his people when they humbled themselves before him. They were vulnerable with their enemies approaching and they did not deserve God's rescue. Having been chronically unfaithful and yet in his gracious fidelity to his covenant people, God intervened with thunder to throw Israel's enemies in confusion and turn their enemies into the vulnerable nation. So to say we raise our Ebenezer is to say that we are planting a symbol, a stone of help to say that God has brought me here, God has rescued me, God has saved me, he has sustained me because of his faithfulness, not because of my faithfulness, for I am unfaithful, but he is a covenant-keeping God. He is faithful the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we are to remember that for days and years and generations to come. We serve a faithful God. Come thou fount. Come thou fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious sonnet, sung by flaming tongues above. Praise the mount, I'm fixed upon it. Mount of thy redeeming love. Here I raise my Nebuchadnezzar, hither by thy help I'm come. And I hope by thy good pleasure safely to arrive at home. Jesus sought me when a stranger wandering from the rescue me from danger, interposed his precious blood. Oh, to grace, how great a debtor, daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy grace, Lord, like a fetter, bind my wandering heart to Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, Lord, take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. Here's my heart, Lord, take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. May God continue to bless you, New Hope. We're praying for you. We know that he's with you. Trust him. He's worthy of our praise.